The objective of this video is to provide visual information on how to set up and complete the Aptros lab. The objectives of this lab is to investigate if the Aptros force depends on the density of the fluid and the volume of the water displaced by an immersed object to calculate the Aptros force using two methods, the volume displacement and the object mass difference, and to compare the Aptros force calculated by each method. To complete this lab, you need the following materials. One lab stand, one clamp, one regular paper clip, one aluminum cylinder, one spring scale, 500 grams, one bean scale, one graduate cylinder, one beaker with water, food coloring, and paper towel to dry water spills. Understanding a cross force. Objects will move up or down when immersed in a fluid depending on the relative density between the immersed object and the fluid. Density is the mass per volume. To illustrate, hot air balloon rises because it's less dense than the surrounding cooler air. Here we have the molecule arrangements of the inside the air balloon. And this is the air outside the air balloon. Ice cubes floats in water because it's less dense than liquid water. Again, the arrangement of the molecules are different. This one is more apart from each other, which make less dense. Aptrosso buoyancy is the force that pushes an object up when it's immersed in a fluid, liquid, or gas. Archimedes' principle integrates this force and density. It states that a body wholly or partially submerged in a fluid moves up by an aptrosso force U. Aptrosso force U is equal to the weight of the water displaced. U is equal to the mass of the water displaced times G. In other words, U is equal to mg. Density is mass over volume. In terms of mass, is density times volume. Making the substitution, density times volume times G. And that's the formula for Aptras force where rho is the density of the fluid. V is the volume of the fluid displaced and G is the acceleration of gravity. Add one drop of food coloring in the water to make it easier to read the transparent graduate cylinder. Make sure you zero, your scale is on zero mark and hang the metal cylinder using the scale and record its mass in the air in grams. To compare both readings, we have here the spring scale marking 75 grams and the beam balance marking 77 grams. So it's pretty close because we, we need to use this value right here but we need, we are using the beam balance just to compare. Fill the graduate cylinder up to seven milliliter with water and use the pipette to fine tune to the meniscus level. So here we have our initial volume, 70 milliliter. Slide the clamp on the lab stand and attach the scale on the clamp. Use a paper clip to attach the weight and fully merge without touching the grad graduate cylinder walls. Here is our final volume, 98 milliliter. 
And here is our final mass, which is the mass in the water in grams is less, is 50 grams, compared with our original 77 grams, 77 grams, 70, yes, yeah, 70. Okay, now we are going to compare the initial and final volume. So the initial volume was 70 milliliter, and the final volume is 98 milliliter. The initial mass or the mass in the air, 75 grams, and the mass in the water, 50 grams. Now we have two methods here. One, we are going to calculate the uptrust force using the volume displacement. And the other one, we are going to calculate the uptrust force using the mass difference. So let's start with this one. To calculate the volume displacement, you need to know the density of the fluid at which the cylinder is immersed. In this case, is water. So the density of the water is equal to one gram per ml. So we know the uptrust force is the weight of the water displaced, and the weight is mass times g. But this mass is the mass of the water displaced. So to calculate that, we need to know the density of the water, which is one gram per milliliter, and the water displace is the difference between both volumes. So the final volume is 98, and the initial volume is 70. 98 minus 70 is 28. So one grams per milliliter times 28 milliliters times 9.8. 8 meters per second square. So cancel the milliliter. So we have 1 grams times 2.744 meters per second square. Now we need to convert the grams to kilograms. So 1 gram is 0 0.001 kilograms times 2 point, we round uh, 74 to 75 meters per second square. Multiply those two numbers, you should have 0 0.27 newtons approximately. Now let's calculate the uptrust force using the mass difference between the cylinder mass in the air and the cylinder mass in the water. So the mass in the air was 75 grams, the mass in the water 50 grams, and the difference in mass here is 25 grams. So now we need to convert this gram to kilos. So divide by 1,000 and we have 0 0.025 kilos. Now we are going to calculate the uptrust force using the difference in mass. So the uptrust force here is mass times G, M times G, didn't change. So the difference in mass is 0 0.025 kilos times the acceleration of gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second square. So when you multiply those numbers, the uptrust force is equal to approximately 0.25 newtons. So pretty close both uptrust force. So both methods work, and we could verify the uptrust force of uh, acting on the aluminum cylinder when submerging water. So that's all for, all for today, and have fun labbing.